Are you interested in customizing sneakers but don't know where to start? In this video, I'll be showing you four basic processes of sneaker customizing that'll always come in handy. If you're new here, make sure to subscribe. I'm Vic Almighty and I've been restoring and customizing sneakers for the last 14 years. In today's video, I'm gonna show you the four main things you need to know as a beginner who wants to customize shoes. We have prep work, which is super important for any project. We're also gonna go over painting, not just with the paintbrush, but with an airbrush as well. Third, we're gonna go over stencils. And lastly, we're gonna talk about the different finishers you need to use to lock in your work once it's all done. For today's project, we're gonna be customizing an all-white Air Force One. It's one of the most affordable and easy bases to work with. And for today's theme, it's gonna be Spider-Man. Let's get started. To get the project rolling, we're gonna focus on the prep work. This is an important step that you gotta do on any project before you start. It's a boring one, but you gotta do it. There is nothing worse than ruining your custom simply because you didn't take the extra time to prep the shoe correctly. This is not a step you wanna skip out on. It doesn't take too long, but without this, the paint simply won't adhere to the material properly. If you plan on painting on leather, you always gotta start with wiping down the leather with acetone and cotton balls. The point of this step is to remove the factory finish that's acting as a barrier that will prevent anything from properly adhering to the material. The more time you spend on this step, the better outcome you'll get. You only wanna focus on the areas that you plan on painting and really get into the details and crevices, because believe me, it'll make a huge difference. If you plan on painting an area that creases a ton, such as the tote box, you definitely wanna spend a good amount of time wiping that area down. Now, acetone could be a very harsh chemical. When doing this step, you have to be in a well-ventilated area and wearing a mask to avoid breathing in the bad fumes. Wearing gloves is also super important. You don't wanna get any acetone on your skin because that can go directly into your bloodstream and that's not healthy. Good to go with the acetone. I spent a solid 10 minutes wiping down the entire shoe. I'm pretty confident I got everything. Most of the time, just by doing that step, it's good enough, but there's other situations where using sandpaper on top of using acetone can further help with wearability. It can also help if you're working on a custom that requires a lot of layers of paint, tape, and a bunch of stencils by sanding down the leather to help ensure the paint doesn't peel due to bad prep. It's another easy step, but I would highly recommend to be careful as you do it. I would recommend doing the sanding with anything between 800 and 1200 grit sandpaper in a circular motion in the areas that you can. Stay away from all the tiny stitching on the uppers of the shoes because as soon as it makes contact with the sandpaper, the threads will fray and when it's time to paint over it, it doesn't have a clean finish. Leather's all prep. Now there's still one more important step when it comes to the prep work, and that is taping. Taping is always needed to avoid getting any overspray on areas you don't want paint on. Now, depending on the paint job, you may use less tape when freehanding or more tape if you're airbrushing the shoe. Almost every time I work on an Air Force One, one of the first thing I do is tape off the sole. I cover it up because I know I won't be painting a rubber sole that the paint typically doesn't stick onto very well. Plus, customizing a shoe can get messy, so you don't want to get any paint on the soles and have to waste time cleaning it up later. Once the uppers are all done and dry, that's when I remove the tape from the soles. Pro tip, to avoid using an excessive amount of tape or wasting time, you can use some paper towels to cover up the bulk area of the shoe. I like to use the brand Scotch Matching Tape for my projects because it does a great job of adhering to a lot of different materials on a shoe. To make sure the edges are fully sealed down on the tape, I either use my nail or a small pair of scissors to press down on all the tape to avoid getting any paint leakage on areas I covered up. Prep work's finally complete. Now I mentioned in the beginning, we're gonna be doing a Spider-Man custom. When it comes to Spider-Man, there are so many variations to play with. Ultimately for this custom, one of my favorite movies of all time is the first Spider-Man with Tobey Maguire. The design for this custom is gonna be the human spider suit. The scene where Peter Parker's trying to become Spider-Man with the homemade suit and trying to get his bread up for Mary Jane is one of my all-time favorites just because of how goofy the name the human spider is. What's your name, kid? The human spider. Human spider, that's it? That's the best you got? The design of that suit is simple enough to put on this Air Force One, plus I haven't seen anybody else do it. On to the next stage, painting. Painting is one of my favorite steps when it comes to custom sneakers. Clean paint jobs have a lot to do with correct prep work, taking your time, and also technique. Good technique isn't something you learn overnight, it just takes tons of practice. Before I can start working on this shoe, I have to look at it and see how I want to approach it. There's a couple questions I ask myself, is this gonna have to be hand painted, airbrushed, or both? Another thing to understand is color blocking in a tasteful way and know where to place the colors on the shoes. Since we are doing the human spider theme, it's gonna consist of four different colors, red, black, white, and blue. In my head, I can already see the design for this shoe. I am gonna start it off by using a paintbrush. The majority of this sneaker is gonna be red, so we're gonna start there. With the Spider-Man Custom, I'm not exactly sure where to take it. I could do a vibrant red, dark red, or a light red. I'm just gonna grab all the reds from Angelus and go from there. This is an acrylic leather paint, and it's flexible and can be used on leather and other materials. Now, this is the majority of the red shades that Angelus offers. Now, there's a couple different routes we can take it. We can mix some reds up to create a different mix, or we can just pick one of these and make it easy. I think I'm gonna go with the second option. This one's a pearlescent red that has a metallic finish to it. Don't think I'll use that 
enough for this custom. Over here, we got Fire Red. It's a bit more vibrant than regular red. This was a standard red. I might use this one because I like the tone. Chili Red is a bit too vibrant. I don't like this one. And we got Autumn Red. This one's way too dark. We're definitely not gonna use this one. So ultimately, between these two, I think I'm just gonna go with the normal red. This is Duller, a gloss reducer. When you add it to the paint, it helps eliminate the shine and gives it a nice matte finish. I'm gonna add the paint to this glass jar and put two to three drops of the Duller. You don't wanna add too much of this stuff because it can cause the paint to crack. First color is ready to go. Let's lay it down with the paintbrush. A couple of pointers when it comes to using a paintbrush. You don't have to have the most expensive paintbrush to get the best results. As you can see, I'm kind of all over the place. These are all really cheap that I got in big packs from Michaels. Sometimes I use expensive ones, but really it's all about the technique. Every coat of paint you lay down has to be thin and consistent all around. At first it may seem like you're not getting anywhere with the amount of thin coats of paint it takes, but after a few coats, the custom should start to come alive. The point of not caking on the paint is to avoid brush strokes, but more importantly, it'll help prevent the paint from cracking during wear. Just take your time, it'll pay off at the end. For technique on how to use a paintbrush, I like to brush on the paint with a quick back and forth brush stroke, almost like you're feathering on the paint and letting the brush and your wrist do all the work. When it comes to getting closer to areas that you don't want any paint on, I slow it down and do my best to have a steady hand in those areas. It's all about the practice when it comes to this. After I lay down the first or second coat of paint, I go over the whole shoe with the heat gun on low heat to dry the paint so I can move on to the next coat. For this red color, I'm expecting to have to lay down anywhere from three to six coats. The reason why I'm doing this step with the paintbrush instead of an airbrush is because there's a few panels, including the sock liner, where I don't want to get any red paint on. Sometimes doing too much taping on the uppers can take more time than just using a paintbrush to freehand it. Occasionally, the tape in some areas won't allow the paint from the airbrush to get in those tiny areas where you need the paint. Also, getting the tape to fully stick on the sock liner material is a little tricky and almost every time when using an airbrush, there's some overspray that gets on the white liner. When that happens, it's almost impossible to remove the overspray from white fabric materials. I've done so many different paint jobs over the years, but some of my top ones that I'm super proud of are my Jordan 4 Suns Customs inspired by the originative City Edition jerseys. Those took over 40 hours to complete because of how many different colors I had to lay down. The amount of lines and stencil work was also insane. Another one I did a few years ago was the Lego Vans. Same thing, I had a sit there and lay down so many colors for the blocks, the line work took forever, and the logos. But I love that custom. Red paint job is good to go. I was right, it took about six coats to get it fully solid. It looks great. I had to take my time in certain areas. For example, around this white sock liner, it was all about taking my time. There's really no way around it. In order to not get any paint on that white sock liner, don't cake on any paint on the paintbrush when you're doing this step, and have a steady hand. I also went ahead and got paint inside these little holes. These are the details that really do matter. Same thing all around the stitching. Inside the little holes, I made sure there was enough red paint to cover up all the white. I did get some red paint on areas that are not supposed to be red. The reason why I did so is because I needed to get paint on the leather edge. I could have taken my time and not got any paint on the white leather. However, I am gonna be laying down a darker shade of blue on that area, so that blue should cover up that red. Now the next big step you gotta get ready for is the airbrushing. I'll go over all those details in just a moment about the compressor, the type of paint to use, and the airbrush. But first, we gotta do some taping. We're gonna cover up everything but the swooshes and the back tab. In this area on both sides, I don't have to be perfect with the tape job since I am gonna be laying down a different shade of blue all around. However, in this area on the red, the tape job's gotta be perfect. I don't wanna get any blue paint on the red from the airbrush. If you're just starting out and don't wanna invest too much money into a brand new compressor and airbrush, I recommend using this one right here. This one from Harbor Freight. I started off with using this one for several years. It comes with everything you need, the compressor, airbrush, and hose. This one goes for about $80, but if you're looking for something that's a bit more high quality, that's gonna last a long time, I recommend using what I use every single day, and that's Iwata. It's a good quality compressor. Same thing with my airbrush. They're both from Iwata. Been using them for years, and they're still trucking through, but it's a little bit more expensive. When it comes to the compressor, it's pretty straightforward. It's just an on and off switch with the pressure gauge. But with the airbrush, there's a little bit more to it, but it's not as complex as you may think. On top, you got your bowl where you pour your paint inside. Back here, it's usually attached with this piece right here. Most of the time, I just take it off, it kind of gets in the way of the needle. The needle is what allows and stops the paint from flowing through this tiny little air hole where the paint comes through. On top, you got your trigger. When you press down and back, it releases the pressured air that helps push the paint out of the airbrush. On the tip of the airbrush, it's supposed to have this nozzle cap. Without it, it simply wouldn't work. And this is what helps the paint go in one direction. All right, let's talk about paints again. For the first part of the shoe, we use Angelus Red to lay down all the paint using a paintbrush. Now for the airbrush, you can use Angelus as well, but some colors, you gotta mix it in with some Angelus Too Thin to get it thin enough to go through the airbrush. In my opinion, that's a bit too much work, so I like to use Jacquard Airbrush Paints. This stuff is ready to go every single time. Both of these brands are really good, except I will use one for hand painting and the other one for airbrushing. If you're doing both, I would recommend having both brands in your arsenal. Got all the blues lined up from Jacquard. Now we're 
do the exact same thing I did with the red paint and eliminate the blues that I won't be using for this project. Off the rip, I know I'm not gonna be using iridescent blue. This is one of my favorite colors. However, it's not suiting for this project. Next, we got metallic blue. Same thing, it's a nice color, but not for this project. Opaque blue, this is a good option. We'll hang on to this one. We got turquoise blue. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this one, but we'll put this one next to the blue. Transparent blue is also a good option. Gallon blue is a little bit too light. I'm thinking no for this one. And opaque white is needed in case I want to make a custom mix blue. Got all the blues picked out. We got fluorescent blue, opaque blue, and turquoise. For the swoosh and the back tab, we're going to be creating a nice gradient. We'll start out with a lighter blue and work our way to a darker blue. For the first part of the swoosh, it's going to start off with a light blue. But none of the blues here are the perfect color match that I want. So we're going to do some mixing and matching. Now the first thing we got to do is lay down a white base coat on the shoe. All it takes is a good couple of coats. I explained how the airbrush and compressor works, but here's a few do's and don'ts for this process. Always spray with light, even coats and slowly work your way up. That will help with a smooth finish at the end and help with wearability. After every time you use a color, always go to the sink and run it through some water and some airbrush cleaner. It only takes about 30 seconds, it makes a big difference and it makes the airbrush last a lot longer. Like I mentioned, we are gonna create a nice smooth gradient on the swoosh and back tab using a lighter blue and a darker blue. We're gonna start out with the lighter blue first. The lighter blue is gonna go on the first half of the swoosh, so really we want to get this part of the swoosh fully solid before we lay down the darker blue on the other half. Airbrush paint is a little bit more runny than regular paint, so I'm usually using a heat gun and drying the paint after every coat to avoid a mess. Also, you want to be at a nice distance when spraying the paint on the shoe. I'd recommend a good 3-5 to five inches away from the shoe to avoid any paint puddles and keep moving the airbrush back and forth to also help with that. To create a gradient paint job, you always start with the lightest color first and move on to the darker color after that. I'm gonna be mixing a little bit of black to the current blue I just laid down to get a darker blue. You don't wanna use any tape to cover up the area you don't want paint on because that will create a harsh line. Instead, start exactly where you want the gradient to start and spray in that direction carefully. No matter what you do, don't spray in the opposite direction of the gradient because that will ruin the paint job. This one's a little bit easier because I'm just doing two colors, but for example, when I do a gradient sunset, I start at the yellow, then work my way to orange, then red, and finish it off with a light and dark purple. It's more colors, but honestly, it's the exact same process. Gradient paint job is fully complete. It's nice and smooth. From right here, we got a nice light blue, and it transitions smoothly to a dark blue. And on both sides of the shoe, the gradient is nice and symmetrical. Let's go ahead and take off the tape. We still have these two blank panels to go, but we're back to hand painting. We are gonna be using Angelus paints. Like I mentioned, if I was gonna try to use Jacquard, it simply wouldn't work, it's way too thin. We have a light blue on the swoosh, so for this panel, I'm gonna go with a darker shade of blue. For this part, we're not gonna be using any tape. We're gonna be freehanding it. I don't wanna get any blue on the other shade of blue or the red. Patience is key. All done with the color blocking, everything looks good so far. Now let's get into some funner stuff. One thing that really makes a custom stand out is painted logos or artwork anywhere on the sneaker to go with the concept you designed. I'm really good at customs, but I'm not good at drawing or freehanding artwork on a shoe. I'll leave that one to the pros. I like to use stencils, so in this next stage, I'm gonna show you how to make stencils and how to apply them onto the shoes to make your customs pop. There's different machines and programs to cut stencils out with vinyl, but my preference, because it's user-friendly, is the brand Cricut. They have newer models nowadays, but my old one still does the job. I use the Cricut program on my laptop to set up the artwork that I want to make a stencil out of. To start, you wanna have a new project opened up, then you wanna upload the artwork to the program. The trick to getting clean stencils is to have high-resolution artwork you wanna cut, such as a PNG or SVG. Once it's uploaded, Click select and add it to your canvas. Next, measure with the ruler the area on the sneaker you want the stencil to be placed and size it accordingly on the program. For the toe box, I'm gonna put the big web and spider because it's the biggest and best spot for this key element. For the artwork we designed, that's gonna go on the side panel. We made the human spider name specifically with the Spider-Man font in mind. Before it's ready to cut, I'm gonna fuse each graphic with the square shape so the machine knows where to cut. I'm gonna place the graphic over the square and select both. From there, I just click slice and remove the parts I don't need. Now that the program is ready to go, I'm gonna set up my Cricut sticky mat and apply the premium vinyl and click the cut button. When it comes to a stencil, there's two parts you can play with, the positive and the negative. For the toe box, we're gonna be laying down the positive part of the stencil for the spider and the web, essentially leaving the spider and the web red. And for the stencil that's gonna go back here, the human spider, we're gonna be using the negative space of the stencil, so everything inside it can be the color that I choose. Now using this pick, we're gonna do some weeding. I'm gonna remove the positive part from the human spider and the negative part from the spider and the web. Stencils are fully weeded. Now to apply them onto the sneakers, we're gonna be using some transfer tape. To do so, we're gonna place it over the stencil. Then with the tool, you're gonna wanna press down on the transfer tape to make sure it picks up the stencil. From there, you pick it up and apply it onto the shoes very carefully. As I'm doing this step, it's a little bit more trickier than I thought. The spider web wraps around the entire shoe, 
with the trans paper in the way, I'm gonna take this off first, and then with my finger, lay down the web carefully all around the shoe. Now I'm gonna tape off everything but the stencil areas so we don't get any paint from the airbrush on other areas we don't want. I'm also gonna be using the heat gun and I'm gonna go over the entire vinyl to make sure it's nice and flat with the rest of the leather. Then with my finger or a metal object, I'm gonna press down all over the vinyl to make sure no paint leakage gets under those areas. One thing I didn't show you guys is the back. On this back piece, I left the red stripe exposed. That part's also gonna be blue and that's supposed to represent the human spider's pants. We're gonna be focusing on the back first. For this piece, we're gonna be doing the exact same gradient I did on the swoosh. To start, we're gonna be covering up all this red so we can lay down a white base coat so the blue can be nice and vibrant. White paint is down, now onto the lighter blue. We're gonna be laying down a couple of shades. We don't want to cake on the paint. And for the final color, the darker blue. We only want to do this part on the top of the human spider. We want to create a nice smooth gradient. On the back, I also laid down a white base coat, but this part is just gonna be solid navy blue. For the front area, we're gonna be laying down some black paint. I'm gonna drop the pressure on the compressor to get minimal paint out of the airbrush. In the center where the spider is, I'm gonna go heavy on the black, but outside of that, on the thin spider web lines, Really, I just want to get overspray outside of those lines. Paint's fully applied, it's nice and dry. Let's peel off the stencils and the tape. I'm gonna be using this pick to remove the vinyl. First, I'm gonna grab the heat gun and warm up the vinyl. It peels off a lot easier by doing so, and it can prevent the paint from peeling. Painting the stencils is complete. Now I'm gonna show you how to cut out vinyl to iron it onto the shoe. This step is specifically for shoelaces if you're trying to give it that off-white style, or insoles if you're trying to remove the old logo and replace it with the new one. For this part, we're gonna be printing out a spider logo. It's gonna be the exact same process as the painting stencils. The only difference is we're gonna be using a different type of vinyl. It's still from Cricut, except this stuff is called Everyday Iron-On. And instead of painting it on, we're gonna iron it with a little iron. Got the iron-on spider fully cut out. Before I can iron it onto the insole, first I'm gonna remove the size tag real quick. Then with some acetone and cotton balls, we gotta wipe off the old logo. I'm gonna apply a little bit of acetone with the cotton ball, let it sit for a little bit, then it should start to peel off. This step is pretty easy. The hardest part though is to get this lined up properly. Once you like the placement, get it down fully flat on the insole, grab your iron, press down on it for a good 15 seconds, then I let it cool down for about 30 seconds, then I peel off the clear part and it's all done. We're almost done with this project. So far it's been a beginner Air Force One custom. However, this wouldn't be a Vic Almighty custom without adding that extra touch. I like the white sock liner as is. It's gonna contrast nicely with the white sole and the rest of the color, but this white tongue is way too much. As some of you guys may know, I have a big boneyard full of parts, swooshes, tongue tags, tongues, insoles, you name it. This is one of the parts that I've had for a really long time. It's an all blue tongue from an Air Force One with the red and white tongue tag. This tongue is perfect for this custom. Let's get it installed. The only thing that's keeping this tongue in place is a single stitch line. I'm using this X-Acto knife to cut it off from the inside before I glue on the blue tongue. I'm using Bar Super Stick to put the tongue in place. All you need is a thin layer of glue on the bottom piece of the tongue and on the inside of the shoe. Once the glue's been applied, you wanna wait a good five minutes, let it cure, heat it up, and then stick it together. Tongue is in place, now to fully lock it in, we gotta reapply the stitching right on this line using this machine. Tongues are in place, paint job's complete. Now the last big step is the finisher. There's different approaches you can do for this step. You can apply it with the paintbrush or you can spray it on with the airbrush. All those options work. What I like to use is Crawlout Matte Finish. It's really easy to apply. You just gotta go outside and spray it on. It's nice and consistent and it holds up. The only thing we gotta do is tape off the tongue and the sock liner. For my custom, I'm gonna go with the matte finish, but you can do any finish you want. You got matte, satin, semi-satin, semi-gloss, gloss, there's all types, it's totally up to you what finish you want. It's been a few minutes, matte finish is all dry, let's take off all the tape. Now I know from experience, once I remove this tape, there's gonna be a bunch of residue all over that white rubber sole. The easiest way to remove that is using a glue eraser. Using this glue eraser, I'm just gonna go back and forth, create some friction to remove all the residue. Final detail, we got a replacement blue lace, with the black Air Force One Dubray. All right guys, that's gonna bring us to an end on this beginner Air Force One custom. I love how they turned out. Hope you guys learned something and make that leap to do your first custom. We're giving away a Rejuvenator executive kit that comes with everything you need. All you gotta do is comment down below what theme you wanna see me do next. I'll pick a lucky winner to win this kit and I'll do that theme in a future video. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. This is Vic Almighty. I'll catch you guys next Monday. See you guys.